Your function is wholeness. And what we're learning from the Course is that all beliefs are equally false. And that there's only one belief, which is also false, called forgiveness, because in heaven there's nothing to forgive. And that one belief on the tapestry is the thread that gets us out of here. It, it takes us beyond the tapestry of the world, the fabric of the world, and, and back into this abstract oneness. So, once you come into an experience of this forgiveness, that's when life is, gets really fun. That's when you could never get into a debate ever again. You would never take a stance. You would never hold on to an opinion. You would never try to be right about anything specifically ever again. Because this unified experience of the quantum field, or, or complete forgiveness, is the answer. And it's always been there. It's like it's always been in our mind. It's the most natural experience. When people talk about how difficult the Course is, or how many challenges and struggles they're having with it, let's be clear, it's the ego is having struggles with the Course of Miracles. I've even heard some teachers say, well, the Course may say that it's simple, but it doesn't say that it's easy. And actually Jesus does even say that it's easy. It's the easiest thing you could ever experience if you follow the Course out, because it's, it's leading to a natural state of mind, which we'll call forgiveness. And then beyond that, that's just the gateway into love and light, which is, talk about natural, that's our birthright. That's how we were created, that's really natural. Forgiveness is a, is a lead into that. And when you get into this experience, then all differences fade. You know, while you're going through the mind training, you may always be concerned about the best use of time, or the right use of time, or not wasting time, not wasting resources. There's still a bit of concern with these things, because you're on your way to forgiveness, and the ego is still concerned <laughs> about that it gets concerned about how you practice the Course. It's concerned about that you're doing the lessons the right way. It's so cool because it's so joyful and, and your care and your concern vanish. Uh, you know how he says, you need merely cast your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. The more God-dependent you become, the more Holy Spirit-dependent you become, you can cast your cares on him. You don't really have to actually have to problem solve anything. You don't have to figure anything out. Everything is given by the one who knows your own best interests. And nothing is too small. Nothing is too tiny. You know, not nothing is out of divine order. Not a blade of grass is out of divine order. Not a mosquito <laughs> is out of <laughs> divine order. <laughs> Yeah, when we first went down to Argentina, Kirsten was down there and she was noticing that the, the mosquitoes were swirling around, but they weren't landing on me or biting me. <laughs> What's the term, Kirsten, that you had for mosquitoes? Mozzies. She said, oh, the mozzies. But there was a tone there, mozzies. <laughs> uh, but, but in the divine, in the quantum field of forgiveness, you know, it's all energy, and it's all perfect, and it's all totally connected, so there's, there's nothing that's biting anything <laughs> in the quantum field. And, and then also, things that you were concerned about, like the right use of time, it, it's very good that you pay so close attention, because when the mind's untrained, it's just kind of like, you know, Jesus says in the Course, an untrained mind can accomplish nothing. And he's calling us to all to, to be miracle workers, but he's basically saying that until you train your mind, and until you're able to start to release from fear, that you're worthless. <laughs> Which is good, I mean, okay, give it to me straight, you know. Uh, okay, it's important to be a miracle worker, I get that, and all right. Uh, and how am I doing? You are much too tolerant of mind wandering. Okay. Like, get in line, you know, like, all right. My mother is kind of a disciplinarian, but, but the feeling that Helen Shuckman had when she was channeling this thing was, she would say things like, I was the 
being given instructions that I dare not disobey. Dare not disobey from a rebel eagle, the ego, <laughs> probably like an eagle. <laughs> but uh, she dared not disobey. And the thing is, it's not that there's any kind of punishment coming if you disobey, but it's just that our peace of mind depends on that alignment, on that obedience, so that even the, the monasteries and the convents that were kind of based on poverty, chastity, obedience, the obedience wasn't necessarily to the abbot or necessarily to Mother Superior, it was really obedience to the Holy Spirit within. And that was helping us in the most capital S self-serving way. Peace of mind is helping us become in, into alignment with that flow. So I know in my life it's been important to become obedient and then when I seem to travel around to different countries, it's like when we talk about retreats and gatherings and talks and lectures, those are just symbols. It's like we're in the divine gathering always. It doesn't begin and it doesn't end. It never stops. There's no point, like in the world you work hard and then you get a vacation. In this experience, there's no vacation. So when people say, do you ever get a vacation? I say, well, it depends on how you look at it. I mean, they're always on vacation or always working. Uh, but it's, there's no split between my time and their time. Uh, like in the world we have oftentimes employers, and we call that their time, and we call our personal, individual play, leisure, relaxed time, as we call it my time, or our, our time. But in this state, there's no duality, so there's not a, a sense of, of trying to keep tabs of where does my begin and where does theirs end. And in relationships, the ego set up the relationships of this world, so it's relationships between individuals, and those individuals seem to have private minds, and those individuals seem to have private thoughts, their own ambitions, their own secrets, their own past memories, their own life stories. It's all a setup, and, and basically what goes for a relationship in this world is just a backdrop for undoing this belief in specialness, for undoing this belief in privacy. Uh, in the end, it's undoing our beliefs in individuality and autonomy, even. And that's really getting to the core of the ego. The ego is autonomy. It's an autonomous belief that you can make a self apart from the self that God created. And so when you go deeper and deeper down, one time I, a friend of mine in Cincinnati said, would you meet with my, my dad? And uh, he's retired, he's a retired minister, and there's a, he meets with like a, a retired scientist, and I think uh, there was another guy who was retired as well. They met at this little old-fashioned diner, like a 1950s diner, and they invited me to go up there. So. I walked into this like 1950s diner in this tiny little town and of course I was the new kid on the block I was walking in and all the eyes in the diner were following me <laughs> and we went there and we went to the back of the diner and these three old guys they just with their white hair and their twinkly little eyes they started asking me they would just meet at the diner to, to solve all the world's mysteries <laughs> and um, so it was kind of cool that day because they asked me all these kind of deep questions and the waitresses were coming in and just sliding in the drinks real carefully because there was this flurry of energy, like this vortex of energy with me and these three old guys uh, at this diner table and, and all the eyes and heads were turning and watching and we just, we kind of solved the whole universe there in about an hour and a half with great joy and great questions. But I think the last question that came in was, the three guys were looking and kind of trying to come up with the next question, and then they said, okay, when we remember heaven and we're back with God, do we still have any sense of individuality? 
I looked at him and I said, no. He had three gold bodies in him. It shook a little bit. And that's, that's the ego shaking. It wants to be individual. It doesn't mind going back to heaven as long as it can retain a sense of uniqueness and individuality. And that's, that's the rub. That's the thing that the ego is going to be fighting and kicking and screaming with. It will spit nails the closer you open up to the light because it doesn't want to be assimilated <laughs> into the oneness. You know, it will do anything. And it doesn't mind you mixing your spirituality as long as you retain a sense of autonomy. You know, it doesn't mind. You just, you can mix, you can, oh, you can study anything you want, and oh, go ahead and meditate, that's all right, and join with your little study groups, and do the things, and, but just retain a sense of autonomy and individuality at all costs. In fact, if you ever start to get close to something that's not that, it's a cult. <laughs> it's just a cult. And stay away from it. If Jesus and the Apostles were here in the Bay Area, <laughs> right now, you know, they would probably be known and classified as a cult. For something really eerie. They're just too happy, uh, they're too peaceful, and they share everything. Ooh, and it's like, and, well, being in San Francisco, they probably would be gay as well. Because Jesus and 12 guys is a gay cult. And you see how the ego's filter would just automatically throw Jesus and the apostles into a box, you know. And so we have to be aware that, that when we're going to go with this, we really have to let go of everything that we think we think and everything we think we know. There's a, a line in the Course, you will believe this Course entirely or not at all. Doesn't that sound a bit like the old all or nothing of Christianity that I was coughing and spitting and fighting against my whole Christian life, you know, like, oh. And at some point in university, just kind of throwing the baby out of the bathwater and saying, enough of Christianity, you know, I can't stand to be a part of anything that's so ritualistic and exclusive and all or nothing and everything, and then choo, here comes the Course, and it's saying at a mind level, not at the form level, but at the mind level, it is all or nothing. And what Jesus calls the all is the right mind, is the right-mindedness of the Holy Spirit, and the nothing is the ego. <laughs> 